From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Here's your number in Kingman, Mr. Dollar. Oh, thank you, operator. One moment. Jake Kessler. Johnny Dollar, Jake. Johnny De- Ha! So you found out I was right. You left our fair state of Arizona and gone back to Hartford. Wrong. Huh? You mean you're still at Lake Mojave Resort? I sure am. Then I'm still betting that you haven't found anything to indicate Elmer Hobbs' death wasn't accidental drowning. Jake. So your expenses will have to come right out of your own pocket instead of the company. Listen. As for that crow you talked about eating, how do you want it cooked? Listen, will you? What? Have you mailed in the insurance claim yet? Well, I was just about to run it over to the post office when your call came in. Tear it up. What? Because, Jake, Elmer Hobbs was murdered. <laughs> Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dog. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Greater Southwest Insurance and Liability Company, Kingman, Arizona office. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my further investigation of the Mojave Red matter. Expense account item 120 cents for the phone call to Jake Kessler and Kingman. I made that call in the office there at Lake Mojave Resort. And needless to say, Jake didn't quite believe me at first. Murder. Elmer Hobbs was murdered? Jake, I'd bet my last buck on it. But, Johnny, the police spent two or three days over there investigating. The coroner, too. And they all reported no evidence of foul play. That's simply because they didn't know where to look. What do you mean? You know Red Barrett, the old fishing guide over here? I've heard of him. Well, Red found the boat that Hobbs used that day. It was lying on the bottom of one of the coves up in the big basin. Sure, because of the storm that drowned Elmer Hobbs. Because somebody sank it. That boat had a couple of air tanks on it that would keep it afloat even if it was swamped. Oh? But, Jake, those tanks were cut open by whoever killed Hobbs. Good Lord. Yeah. But who did it, Johnny? That's what I'm going to find out. I'll call you later. I hung up on Jake Kessler, then walked on back to the dock where I found Red Barrett and Buster Favor waiting for me. Did you get your call to Kingman through all right, Johnny? Yeah, Red. Jake Kessler's holding up the claim on Elma Hobbs Insurance. Good. That's good. Did you, uh, tell Buster what we found up the lake? Yes, sir. Yeah, Johnny, he did. It's like I said in the beginning, I just didn't see how a man like Mr. Hobbs could ever get himself capsized up in the big base no matter how bad a wind came up. Buster was the only one that agreed with me, Johnny. Well, quite frankly, I don't see why everybody wasn't suspicious when Hobbs' boat wasn't found after the storm. Right, Johnny. But now that you and Red found it sunk in the bottom of that cove and with the flotation tanks cut open, yeah, it sure looks like murder. Oh, that's what I thought from the first, Buster. That's why I telephoned all the way to Hartford to get Johnny out here. But who could have wanted to kill him? Any ideas, Buster? No, sir, Johnny. I certainly haven't. You sure there was nobody here at the resort who might have wanted him out of the way? Johnny, the other folks who were here at the time it happened, why, they didn't even know Mr. Hobbs. You're sure of that? Absolutely. See, he wasn't much of a mixer. He stayed by himself all the time. That's right, Johnny. Elmer used to go out fishing first thing in the morning, and he'd be the last to come in at night. He'd go to his room, cook his supper, and then go to bed. All right, listen. He was killed just before or during the big storm you had. That's right. Who else was out on the lake at that time? Nobody. Nobody from here, that is. All our people, all our boats were back here at the landing. They'd got the storm warning. So don't you see, John, it must have been somebody from up the lake. What do you mean? From one of the other landings. What other landings? Cottonwood, Emery's, any one of them. Yes, sir. Somebody sank his boat and tried to sink his body with it. But we found his body washed up on the Nevada shore. You found it, Red. Yes, I did. My best friend. I dove down to that boat, Buster. And I found not only the bashed in flotation tanks, but where the anchor line had apparently been lashed around the body to hold it there. And you remember, Buster, the rope marks we found on Elmer's body? Yeah, but the police, sheriff, coroner, and the rest... What did they say? He probably just got tangled up in that rope when he was fighting the storm. But they were wrong. Yeah, apparently. Well, why do you say that, Johnny? Well, because so far this evidence of murder is... Well, it's all circumstantial. 
As for motive. Motive? Well, I hadn't thought of that. Red, well, the main thing is that that cutting open the flotation tanks was done with, with some kind of an axe. I was asking about motive. And I know that Elmer didn't have any axe on that boat. Do you find the axe, Johnny? No, no. Uh, now, Red... I'll tell you what he had in his boat, beside his clothes, I mean. Well, let's cover this motive thing. He right? had the anchor, of course. That went with the boat. Red. He had a nice new Siloflex rod with a Mitchell 300 on it. Yeah, but now look. He had a long-handled neck that he'd picked up somewhere in L.A., and an old beat-up McKinney tackle box full of plugs and spoons all and right, a fish stringer. Right. And that was all, Johnny. No axe. That was all he had with Red, me. that bush you're beating around is getting pretty big. Well, Johnny, I don't know what you mean. Well, I asked you about possible motive, and so far all you've done is evade the question. Now, why should I do that? Well, that's what I want to find out. Well, now, Johnny... Do you know of anyone who might have wanted Mr. Hobbs dead? You say you knew him pretty well. And I did. Yes, sir. Well? No, sir. No, sir, I certainly don't. You're sure? Why, well, Elmer... Well, he... Well, nobody could want to kill a fine man like him, Johnny. He, he was one of my best friends. Yeah. At least while ever he was here, I mean. I never knew anything about him in L.A., I mean. He was in business back there, I understand. That's right, with a man he called Stu Manley. Wait a minute. What is it, Johnny? I'm going back to the office and call Jake Kessler again. Yes, sir. Elmer was my best friend. Come on. Come on up to the office with me, Buster. Well, you can use the phone here on the dock, Johnny. Uh, no, no, come on. Uh, Red, we'll see you later. I'll be here, sir. You look like you just got hit with an idea, Johnny. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm afraid it isn't a very pretty one. Oh? Morning, What Buster. is it, Johnny? Any of the early fishermen come in yet? Oh, yes, sir, Mr. Carson, and they picked up some nice bass up above the power line crossing. Good, good. I was thinking of going up that way myself. Yeah, well, good luck. Now, what were you going to say, Johnny? Were Red and Mr. Hobbs such really good friends? Well, they were always together when he came here. Of course, they were always fighting like cats and dogs over some silly thing or other, but didn't mean it. Oh, now, wait a minute, Johnny. Was Red alone when he found Hobbs' body? Yeah, he was, and he brought it back here, but now look. There weren't any other boats up the lake? Yeah, there were, but Red was searching that particular part of the shore alone. But surely you don't Jake think... Jake Kessler told me something about Hobbs' insurance policy, but not quite enough. Johnny, listen. Come on, let's get to that phone. <laughs> No. If you're right, that is. No. Let me handle this alone for the moment. Now, listen, Jake. Yeah? Didn't you tell me that the insurance claim was filed by one of Hobbs' beneficiaries, plural? That's right. By his business partner in L.A. Who are the others? Just one other. If you'd taken time to listen to Who me. Who is it? You were so fired up when I drove you down Who there. is this other beneficiary, Jake? You're still sure Hobbs was murdered, huh? I'll bet on it. So now you're looking for somebody with a motive, huh? The beneficiary, Jake. Like I told you. One of them was his business partner, J. Stuart Manley. And the other? Red. Red. Yeah, Red Barrett. Act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. Our flag now numbers 50 stars. And behind each star, there stands yet another flag representing one of the 50 states. Illinois' state flag uses many of the symbols of our nation's great seal. The eagle, the symbol of our national strength, rests on a shield representing the states, indicating that the states and the nation are bound together, for in unity there is strength. The arrows in the eagle's talon indicate military preparedness, and in his beak is a scroll which reads, State Sovereignty, National Union. A reminder of the greatness of the state of Illinois and its pride in being a member of the United States of America. Illinois' state flag, the flag of the 21st state to enter the Union, was adopted on July 6, 1915. And now, Act Two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the Mojave Red sequel. <laughs> Two people who I knew stood to gain by the death of Elma Hobbs. One, his business partner, Jay Stewart Manley in Los Angeles. The other, Red Barrett, fishing guide at Lake Mojave Resort, who said he'd found his body, who professed to have been his best friend. I wondered. 
I said as much to Buster Favor as we sat there in the office of the resort. Red do thing like that, I won't believe it, Johnny. But he's the one person who could have engineered the whole thing, Buster. But why then would he lead us to the place where Mr. Hobbs' boat was sunk? Well, and point up the fact it was deliberately sunk and an attempt made to sink Hobbs' body with it. Oh, there's a cover-up? To make him look clean? Ah, oh, no, Johnny. Well, the boat would have been found in that cove sooner or later anyway. Uh, I tell you, you're wrong if you suspect Red. Look, if Hobbs' business partner is a beneficiary, too, why don't you look him up? I fully intend to, unless Red did do it. No. And I can prove it. No, Johnny. Let's go back to the dock so I can talk to him again and see... Buster, I just... Oh, hello, Johnny. I, uh, suppose you've heard him. Yes, Red told me. You're quite sure it was murder? Yeah. I'm sorry. Listen, Buster. Yeah. Look, uh, Ham, as manager of this resort, you know Red pretty well. I sometimes wonder. That's what I came up here to ask you about, Buster. Huh? Did you send him skiting out of here? What? We just left him down at the dock. You mean you didn't see him tearing out of here in the pickup truck a few minutes ago? What? Ham. Red? Where'd he go? I don't know, but he certainly left in a hurry. Johnny. Yeah. No, I still can't believe it. What are you boys talking about? Uh, nothing. I... Ham, is there a car around here I can use? Oh, sure. Uh, take mine. There are the keys. Thanks. Incidentally, Buster, uh, I was poking around where Red kept his fishing tackle trying to find that rig he borrowed from me last week. What did you find, Ham? Well, I thought Buster might know where the old coot got hold of that new spinning outfit. Siloflex rod. What? Yeah, and a brand spanking new... Mitchell Reel. Oh, yes. Oh, no. All right, Ham, Buster, you just sit tight. If Red comes back here before I do... Comes back? Yeah, say nothing to him about what we've learned. Just keep him here and tell him... Tell him I'll return to talk with him later. Nothing else. But, Johnny... No, no, do as I say. Look, boys, what's going on I'll here? see you later. Well, now, Johnny... Red was one of Elma Hobbs' beneficiaries. He was the one who'd found the body. He had the fishing tackle that had belonged to Hobbs. And when it was discovered by Ham Pratt, he'd left in a hurry. All pretty incriminating. Which is not why I took off in Ham's car... West on 77, south on 95, and west again on 66. Item four, a buck even for a sandwich and a Coke and Barstow. Item five, 480 for a tank full of gas at the sign of the flying red horse. Then westward again. And always with an eye out for red in the old pickup truck. Finally, as the sun was disappearing over the edge of the Pacific, I pulled into Los Angeles. The real estate office of Manley and Hobbs was closed. A directory at the nearest phone booth gave me Jay Stewart Manley's home address. 1308 Pandora Avenue in the residential section, call Westwood. The neat white stucco house was dark, the garage empty. I let myself in through a back door by slipping the lock with the aid of one of my business cards. It was hard to see inside, but I didn't want to turn on any lights. And that was a mistake. Because as I quietly rounded a corner and started toward the den... I guess wrong. Somebody was at home, was in that den behind the now closed door. And that somebody knew that I was in the house. There was only one thing to do try to bowl my way through. Well, Mr. Manley, you're just. Oh, you killer! Wait a minute. Oh. Red. Uh, Johnny Dollar. Well, I. It kind of, kind of looks like I made a mistake, doesn't it? Yeah, Red. The biggest mistake of your life. Act three of your truly Johnny Dollar in a moment. A question that has been asked many times is, at what age does a boy become a man? It isn't when he reaches the age of 21, but when the qualities of grit and determination within him make him face up to the responsibilities of a job to be done, no matter what the difficulties. On May 21st, 1862, during the Civil War battle at Corinth, Mississippi, William H. Horsfall was serving as a drummer with Company G of the 1st Kentucky Infantry. During the furious and deadly engagement, he saw his captain fall wounded between the lines. Although, as a non-combatant, Horsefall was supposed to stay out of the range of fire, he rushed bravely forward at the risk of his own life to aid his wounded captain. Ignoring the fact that they were in the midst of a continuing and deadly hail of fire from both sides, the courageous drummer dragged the wounded officer to a place of safety 
thereby saving his life. Later on, Horsfall grabbed a gun and some ammunition and went into the fight. But his commanding officer finally sent him to the rear, recommended him for the Medal of Honor, and gave him a furlough. Gallant as the drummer's valorous actions were, the officer felt that 14-year-old William Horsfall was still too young for battle. But Horsfall's personal code had already proved him a man. And now, Act Three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the Mojave Red sequel. You know what common sense tells me, Red? What, Johnny? That you and Jay Stewart Manley were in cahoots in the murder of Elmer Hobbs. Oh, no, sir. You can't believe that. You told us that Hobbs had a Silaflex rod, a Mitchell reel in his boat. Yes, sir, he did. Just like the reel. We re- found him, Red, among your things back at the lake. Oh, you found mine, Johnny, that Elmer gave me to match his. Look. Now, look, look what I found here in Manley's closet. This was Elmer's rod and reel, Johnny. What? All strung up with a with a wobble right spoon on it, just just the way he fished with it, and he could cast so accurate. You're sure this was his? Well, he, here's his initials right on the butt, and scratched on the reel too. E H. Yes, yeah, if you'd have looked, you'd have found my initials on the rod there at the lake. But look, look here, look, look what I found in the corner of this closet, all wrapped up like to hide it. The axe. And I'm no detective, Johnny, but just look at these marks, like it was used to hack at some kind of thin metal. The flotation tanks on that boat. Maybe you are a detective, Red, and a good one. But why did you come tearing in here to L.A.? In the hopes, Johnny, I'd find these things. I thought from the first that Manley might be the one. Elmer never did really trust him. He told me that many a time. But you didn't accuse him when I talked to you at the lake. I wanted some proof. Manley'd not only get a hunk of Hobbs insurance, but a share of the business. That's right, sir. Oh, oh I, I pulled a little trick on him, too. What do you mean? Well, I stopped along the way and I phoned him to make sure that he wouldn't be here for a while. Well, what did you tell him? I disguised my voice, Johnny, real good. Oh, that voice of yours? I told him that this was a friend, I said. That I thought he ought to know that you were working on the case. Oh, that if he'd left any evidence at Lake Mojave, he'd better get there and steer you away from it. Red. And that, that that's the way I got him away from here so I could find this stuff. But if he's gone to Lake Mojave... Oh, I knew you could take care of him. And if, if I did find these things like I did, I was going to phone you there to be ready for him. Well, then why did you attack me when I came in here? Oh, sorry, Johnny, but I thought maybe he'd got wise and come back and maybe recognize my voice after all. Exactly what happened, Red. Mr. Manley... Sir? That's right, J. Stuart Manley. And this is my wife, Mr. Dollar. Red? Shoot them. Kill them, Stuart. They're burglars, don't you see? And we caught them robbing the house. Quiet, Mary. I suppose that means we were right. That you did kill your partner, Elmer Hobbs. That stupid old man, fishing all the time instead of tending to the office, taking all the money. Mary! But now we'll have some money for a change. Own the business! Mary, shut up! I see you found old Elmer's things. No, sir. This fishing rod is his, not yours. Oh, put it down. Pretty foolish of you to bring that stuff here, Manley, especially the axe. I'm sure any good police lab will find traces of aluminum from the boat on it. Kill him, Stuart. They're robbers. Their fingerprints will be all over. Mary's right. Your prowler's ransacking my house. And I can see the bulge of your pistol, Dollar. So any court in the land will uphold my right to kill you in self-defense. And Dollar... You go first. Listen, you think you can shoot as straight as I can cast a fishing plug? Huh? Like this? Oh, no. No! No! Oh, get back, Mrs. Manley. I'd hate to have to sock a woman. But you hurt him. Yeah, as badly as he hurt Elmer Hobbs. And look, that horrible fishing plug. The hooks have ripped his hand open. It's bleeding. That red-headed old fool throwing those hooks at him. Oh, quiet. Stuart, dear Stuart. Red, that was a beautiful piece of casting. He almost tore his hand off with that plug. Well, Johnny, it was with Elmer's own rig. I, I think maybe he would have liked that. I hope so. But you know what I hope the most, Johnny? What, Red? That the fishing... That the fishing is real good up where Elmer is now. Manley and his wife 
Yeah, Red had figured right. The morning of the day that Hobbs was killed, they'd rented a boat out of Cottonwood Landing a few miles up the lake, then ambushed him there in the big basin. Bob Cole at Cottonwood had noticed the new rod and reel when they'd come back off the lake just before the big storm. Had noticed the axe, too, when he'd wondered about it. Now he knows. So from here on in, it's up to the sheriff's office and the courts. Expense account total, including return of Ham's car, a few days of fishing, and the trip back to Hartford, $307 even. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Our star will return in just a moment. Our flag now numbers 50 stars, and behind each star there stands yet another flag for each of the 50 states. New Mexico's flag is an ancient Zia sun symbol, a red circle on a field of yellow, radiating from four points, which we might indicate as north, east, south, and west, are four parallel lines. Four was a sacred number of Zia, the number most often used by the giver of all good gifts. The earth had four main directions, each with its own gifts. The year had four seasons, each with a different offering for mankind. The day had four phases, sunrise, noontime, evening, and night. Life had its four divisions, childhood, youth, manhood, and old age. Everything in life and nature was bound together in a circle, the circle of life and love, without beginning and without end. And in this great brotherhood of all things, man had four obligations. He must develop a strong body, a clear mind, and a pure spirit. Fourth, and most sacred, he must devote unselfishly body, mind, and spirit to the welfare of his people. From this simple symbol, the Zia Sun, we read the legend of a wonderful philosophy. The flag's colors of flaming red and golden orange represent the banners of Ferdinand and Isabella, which were carried by Columbus across the Atlantic. New Mexico's state flag, the flag of the 47th state to enter the Union, was adopted on March 19, 1925. Now, here's our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, some of the funniest old characters I ever meet. And a 10-year-old boy solves the case. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood and is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone, who also wrote today's story. Heard in our cast were Virginia Gregg, Harley Bear, Forrest Lewis, Barney Phillips, Alan Reed, and Russell Thorson. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Roy Rowan speaking. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. Thank you.